My dearly beloved in Christ, this morning I would like to speak about the saint whose feast we celebrate today, St. John Marie Vianney. It is interesting in the Gospel, after our Lord cured the deaf mute, that the people said, He has done all things well. Indeed, our Lord did perform all things well. We could say the same of the saint whose feast we celebrate today. St. John Marie Vianney was born in 1786, just three years before the infamous French Revolution, which brought such devastation to France. In fact, after the French Revolution, for a period of time, the churches were closed. Priests were forbidden to function. St. John Vianney received his first Holy Communion in a barn. People would gather in the barns when a priest came around in hiding. And when he was a young man, St. John Vianney was drafted into the army. This was the time of Napoleon. And when he was with his company and ordered to march out, they stopped in a town, maybe for lunch, and he went into the church to pray. And he was so lost in prayer that as his company walked out in the march, he was he had forgotten the time. And finally, when he came out of the church, he realized they were gone. So he started to double time to try and catch up. And he says he didn't quite know what it was, but something just simply told him to leave. And he just simply walked off the road, went into the woods, and came upon a family that lived in the woods and simply lived with them for a couple of years. And finally, when that turbulent time was over, he went into the seminary, and as is well known about his life, he had a difficult time with some of his studies in the seminary. But by the grace of God and by the providence of God, he was able to be ordained. I recall reading one story that is told about him, that when the bishop questioned the rector of the seminary about him, because he had trouble with some of his studies, the rector said, well, he prays well. And the bishop said, then I will ordain him, because he will be a good priest, because he prays well. Well, indeed, he became a wonderful priest. After a couple of years as an assistant in one parish, he was assigned to the village of ours. Now, the village of ours was in a dreadful condition, and I believe this was in the year 1812, 1813, maybe 1815, when he first became pastor at ours. And there had been no priest there for some time. The church was in a dilapidated condition, and the people were in a much worse condition. Once he cleaned up the church, started to have mass, only a few people came, even on Sunday. St. John Vianney would spend a lot of time preparing his sermons, and his sermons on Sunday were fire and brimstone, we might say. And he wasn't really speaking to the people that were there. He was speaking to the people who weren't coming. But, of course, word got to them. And gradually, more and more people came to church. Early on, he spent a great deal of time fixing up the church, painting, obtaining new vestments, because, again, things were in such a bad condition. But as time went on, he began to spend almost all his time in church in prayer. And the word got around among the parishioners that if anyone wanted to find the pastor, they would find him in the church. And gradually, as time went on, he established catechism classes. Word spread, and more and more people came to confession. And so for many years of his life, he spent untold hours, even up to 16 hours a day, in the confessional, hearing confessions of people who came from all parts. St. John Vianney worked many miracles, but he always blamed them, that's a term he used, on St. Philomena. He had a great devotion to St. Philomena, and indeed, indeed was probably the first saint to propagate her devotion. There was a woman in France, very dedicated to the work of Holy Mother Church. She founded the uh, Society for the Propagation of the Faith and also the Holy Society of the Holy Childhood and the Living Rosary. Her name was Pauline Marie Jericho. And she was in such 
a physical condition of illness that the doctors despaired of her life. Well, she heard about this new saint, Saint Philomena, and she made a journey to the shrine in Mugnano, Italy, and was completely cured. And on the way back, as she came through Ars, in southern France, she gave a portion of the relics that she had of St. Philomena to St. John Vianney. And he erected a side shrine in his church, gave out medals of St. Philomena, promoted devotion to her, and he always said that she was the one that worked the miracles. At any rate, he was greatly devoted to her. St. John Marie Vianney was extremely penitential spent, as I said earlier, much time in prayer, but also fasted rigorously. In fact, you read about his life, how he subsisted on just a few potatoes a day, if even that, and one wonders how humanly one could survive as he did. Nevertheless, survive he did, even though he was very emaciated. And he did this penance for the conversion of his parish. He would pray, Dear God, convert my parish. And once a priest came to him who admired what he accomplished in ours, and the priest said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I prepare my sermons very carefully. I have the catechism. I'm instructing the people. But my parish has not been converted. And St. John Vianney said, Well, have you prayed for your people? And have you fasted? for your parish. And the priest was surprised. He hadn't even thought of that. And that brings out an important point to us. We have many intentions, and we pray for these intentions, and we desire the conversion of our loved ones. We desire so many blessings, but to what degree do we do penance? That's the one thing we are reluctant to do, to mortify ourselves, to practice penance, to deny ourselves. But this is something we see in the lives of all the saints, especially St. John Marie Vianney. As I mentioned, his parish became completely converted, but it was a real battle. The, when he first went there, the people did not observe Sundays. They worked on Sundays. They didn't go to Mass. And after a period of time, through his preaching and his efforts, Sunday was observed, it was like a beautiful, quiet day in ours where people would spend time in church or visiting, and they truly honored God on his day, the Lord's day. He also had a problem with drinking in the parish, but he succeeded in closing down every single tavern in the town because he realized they were an occasion of sin. He also was vehemently opposed to dancing. Dancing, which was very popular among the young people. On one occasion, he went out of the village and waited, because there was going to be a dance that day, and I believe it was a Sunday. And he waited until the fiddler came on his way to the village, because in the village they didn't have any musicians. So this fiddler came who was going to perform for the dance, and he asked him how much he was going to earn that day. And he told St. John Vianney, how much he was going to be paid. And St. John Vianney gave him the money and asked him to, to leave. So there was no fiddler, so there was no dance that day. But he fought this battle for years. And again, finally came to the point where people would say, visitors would say, ours, the whole village of ours is like a monastery because the people were so pious and serious-minded in living their faith. Quite an extraordinary saint. And how did he become that way? From the time he was very little, he had a great devotion to our Blessed Mother. He often spoke of his own mother. Later on in his life, he couldn't even talk about his mother without tears coming to his eyes. Because he believed that she was the one who gave him this deep love for his faith, which he had. St. John Marie Vianney is known for many things, as I mentioned, for the confession. Why did so many people come to him for confession? He could read hearts. He would sometimes tell people in the confessional, you missed a sin. And he would tell them what they should have confessed. And people again came, thousands of people, conversions by the hundreds, by the thousands. And yet, and yet in his own eyes, he was unworthy. He never thought that the people were coming to ours because of him. He just thought that God was blessing this village. And 
even since are human. And so he went through periods of discouragement. He tried to escape. Once word got around and people went, the parishioners, to stop him from leaving the village. But on one occasion, he did leave. Succeeded in leaving and went to live with his brother for a couple days. And then the people started going there. And he realized he had to return. But why did he leave or was tempted to leave? Because he said, I'm spending so much time helping other people for their souls and I'm not spending any time on my own poor soul. And he thought he was going to have to spend all this time in purgatory. He wanted just to go to a monastery and prepare for death. But of course, that was not God's will. So for more than 40 years... He was the pastor of Ars in southern France and accomplished such extraordinary amount of good. He didn't live that long ago. He died in 1859, so just a little more than 150 years ago. St. John Riviani is the patron saint of parish priests, but he should remind all of us of the value of living our faith seriously because our whole life is a preparation for death, a preparation for eternity. And how foolish are those souls, and sadly, so many Catholics, who live according to the fashion of this world, being unmindful that they are preparing for eternity by the way they live. We also see in his life the value of penance united to our prayers. Let us not be afraid to do penance. Penance is something very pleasing to God. When we deny ourselves, our spiritual life grows. And truly, we can say of him what the people said of our Lord, as is related in today's gospel. He has done all things well. Let us also strive to do all things well. To live our faith, not just on Sundays, but to live our faith every day. To do all things well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.